Ja on rekord kiri. Thank you, CD. Why should I thank you? You've thrown a lot of us guys. You must always be. <laughs> <laughs>This is episode 9 of season 1 of a politics podcast brought to you by Eyewitness News. There is a heck of a lot happening in the world of politics. I see in KZN, Sitle Zikalala resigned as premier. That's how fast news happens in politics. He stepped down. The ANC in KZN has already put forward names to replace Zikalala. In fact, this week they've announced that Nomusa Dube Ngube is who they want to see as the next premier of KZN. So she's a premier nominee at the moment. She needs to then go back to the legislature and be voted in. If she is voted in successfully, and I think that'll happen next Next week, she becomes the first female premier of that province. That's South Africa's, one of South Africa's largest provinces. I think if you think about voting blocks, KwaZulu Natal competes with tiny Gauteng because of population size. So imagine that finally a woman on top. And I have an issue. I think it's fantastic. But I have an issue that this is a 2022 conversation, which leads me on to my next very tiny, maybe not so tiny issue. It is Women's Month. We are in the middle of August as we speak. And I'm a little bit annoyed that Women's Month comes along with platitudes. Trans and trans. Musadi tswara tipa kabagaleng. Eh, wumandla. Eh, mbogoto. I really find those exhausting because while you say that, right, you juxtapose that with how women are treated in the country versus the flowers and roses we'll receive on our desks on Women's Day all of, and chocolates. All of those things irk me because I'm also of the belief that women should be getting pepper sprays and lessons about um, from self-defense classes because we're in a war zone. That's what South African women are facing every day. Women and children are living in the middle of a war zone where gang rape is not enough to demand immediate action or immediate anger. It takes a couple of days for it to find expression, and we saw that happening around Kahiso, but it's not enough to outrage the entire country, right? So that's South Africa. So yes, fantastic. First female premier there in the making. But in 2022, I'm not so happy about that. Women's Month, Women's Day coming up this week. I don't want your roses and I love flowers. I don't want your roses though. I want pepper spray. I want you to give me something that allows me to navigate this hellhole of a country. Yes, I said it. Because it is hellish living in South Africa. But in other news, there are developments in the political party space, particularly the Democratic Alliance. Now, the DA is South Africa's second largest political party, the main opposition. What's been really strange about the DA over the years is an inability to retain black talent. So it seems the party gets very, very, very defensive. I'm, I'm sure you, if you are on social media, you might have seen Helen Zilla, who's the federal council chairperson, releasing a tweet from a Facebook post about how, first of all, she, uh, first of all, Makashwile Ghana, who resigned last week, is not as senior as the media has made him out to be. Please note that she said the same thing about Mbani Ntuli when she left six months ago. She said something quite similar about Bongani Baloi when he left at the end of last year, and so on and so on and so forth and so on. And that's the difficulty of navigating a party that doesn't see race in a country so skewed on the basis of race. 
That's what happens when you're dealing with a political party that wasn't want, doesn't want to be told when it's wrong. Mind you, these people are all leaving saying there's something wrong about the way the party wants to position itself. These people leave with questions around what agenda the DA is pursuing. They question whether or not the DA still wants to be an inclusive party that represents everybody. This happens as they see the DA go out boldly pursuing right-wing agenda issues, time and memoriam, where you expect to see an AFRI forum, a lobby group that is based on nothing but discrimination and that looks for nothing but the rights of the minority. You start seeing something like the DA, which was an actual competitor moving itself towards that. And so these former leaders will tell you that the DA doesn't seem to want to grow any further. Because to grow further in a country like South Africa, where the blacks are the majority, you need to speak to black conditions. And the DA doesn't seem interested in that. However, with every leader that makes that point, you have somebody like Helen Ziller who takes an affront. So in this case with Makashi Ghana, not only did she minimize his efforts and his contributions to the party, but she came for me. I found it really, really odd that a leader would put out a list of their black public representatives. Where's the shame in that? Where's your ability to self-introspect as a leader about whether or not you should actually press the, the publishing button, the tweet button, whatever it is. Because when you do that, you minimize all those people's efforts to build your organization. You minimize what they do every single day when they get up from their homes. You minimize their sense of being, their dignity in every way. And then you reduce it to, oh, I've always had a feeling Tidi Madia doesn't know how to read for meaning. Please spare me. Spare me. I have a feeling you still don't know how to read the room. In 2022, Helen, for goodness sake. Anyway. We speak to Makashwila Ghana, who remains diplomatic and respectful and careful when he speaks about the DA in the face of all this nonsense from Helen Ziller that minimizes days and nights he's poured into the DA, even when she was leader, mind you. So we chat to him about how is it that he has no regrets about leaving and what the future should be for the country, but most importantly, his future. What does he want to see? Ghana says, yes, he's leaving the DA, but he's not leaving politics. And we must stick around that there'll be an announcement before the end of the year. So this week, people are still reeling from news that Makashule Ghana has left the Democratic Alliance. Makashule forms literally a trail of talent that walks away from the country's main opposition party. This happens with the DA already on a downward trajectory. Don't pay attention to just what's happening with the main party, with the governing party. What happens with the ANC matters, but opposition parties are also a crucial part of our democracy. So when the main opposition is not in good health, you've got to ask questions about what's going on there. This week, I speak to Manka Shwile Ghana, about why after 20 years he joined the DA when he was 19. Why after so long has he decided that it's time to call it quits? And what does he want to do with the rest of his time? He's told people that he has no regrets about leaving the DA. He's spoken about how there's no time to rest. South Africa needs people to urgently get on their feet and he's doing his his bit he's not leaving politics just the da he joins me now in one of our studios here at prime media place makashule thank you so much ghana for joining me uh, thanks very much uh, cd and uh, thanks for having me uh, i feel uh, honored it's a privilege to be sitting here yeah that's a uh, lot honor privilege that's a, <laughs> that's know, a heck of a uh, lot and have a conversation with you uh, on your podcast politrix I hope not to trick anyone during this conversation. <laughs> Polytricking, you must get it right. Polytricking. So yes. I don't want I, w- I don't want to polytrick anyone. <laughs> uh, I will speak uh, the truth. Your truth. My truth. That's right. As I know it. And I accept that. Yes. Has it been a whirlwind? I mean, it's been a couple of days since yeah. you announced your resignation. I think you did on Thursday last week. Mm. What's the reactions been like for you from? people within the DA circles, Mm. but also people who care about where Ghana's career is going in politics. Yeah, it's it's been, uh, uh, I would say, uh, at at a certain level, overwhelming um, and emotional at times. Uh, Reading through the messages, especially from the DA colleagues, 
you mm. know, um, the the members, the activists that I had worked with uh, over the years. Uh, I've been reading the messages on on my WhatsApp, on on Facebook. Uh, I, I got a bit emotional. Uh, you know, I I didn't think that in in my course of uh, doing work, saving saving South Africa, saving in the DA, I would have touched people in the manner in which they they described uh, me and the experience that they had with me and it, it it somehow felt like i was i was attending my own memorial service mm-hmm. where people uh, uh were saying the kind of life i've lived uh, so that that kind of told me that uh, there are things that uh, we we kind of don't take as seriously uh, and we, it impacts other people's lives. Uh, so you, you take know. your own role in politics for granted until a moment like this that shows you what you've done for people? Yeah, I, w- I wouldn't say take it for granted, but, uh, you know, you don't realize through the small acts, you know, uh, the small acts that one does on a uh, uh, sustained basis, uh, how much impact it has um, on, on people. And on, also on one side, I... I'd be happy that I got to to hear, I got to read about uh, how people feel about me, um, especially mm. on 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 the one-on-one calls. You know, it's it's one thing for someone to put a, a message on Facebook. Maybe you might think, ah, maybe it, it's a, it's a bit of a, a, you know peer pressure. Mm. Everyone is sending is sending their tributes and so forth. But then when when you hear the words, the expressions, how you 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 help people when you interact with them, one on one, you you then kind of sit, you know, like like yeah, I don't, I thought I thought uh, this uh, shy village boy was just uh, <laughs> you know doing doing his bit and didn't uh, really impact life. So so there was that part, and I think generally, uh, in terms of the general public, so people that uh, we we kind of meet either on social media or those that have followed my politics. It it has been a, a general positive response. I haven't okay. I, I haven't seen a lot of uh, 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 personal attacks, you know, um, on my character, on the work that I've done. So even people who would uh, disagree with me politically, uh, maybe they sub they they follow or they lead other political parties. They recognize the contribution that one has made um, um, in the in the politics, in the political space, and and the manner in which uh, one uh, continues to carry himself in doing in doing this work. So, so I, uh, it's it's been yeah a lot a lot more emotional than I thought. I mean, because this was not an instant decision. Mm. Helen is the leader of the DA. She's not leader of the DA. Let me let me place her properly. Helen Zilla, leader of the federal council, or mm. the federal council chairperson of the DA, mm. then puts out a statement on her Facebook where she speaks about how actually the media makes you more mm. senior than what you are. Do you feel that somebody like Helen Zilla, one, minimized your role? Secondly, did that as an attempt to deflect? Even before we get into her blacklist, let's just speak about how she then positions you in trying mm. to explain that it's actually not a massive loss for the DA, considering how much you've plowed into particular constituency for the DA. Uh, I, w- I will not be the one that sits here and say the DA has lost. Uh, I, I should not be the one doing that. I think other people should do that. Uh, I, I've, I've uh, contributed to the best of my ability. Uh, and it in every every position that uh, one got uh, elected to serve in, I did the best that I could. And that's why I say this. Whether one is senior or not doesn't matter. Right? For me, it was never about a position or seniority. But there's no one that can climb the Carlton Center and claim that in the 20 years that Ghana was a member of the DA, he contributed nothing. And that's what makes me happy. That's why I have no regrets. Because I know that there will be no person in the DA that can uh, 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 climb the Carlton Center and, sta- claim, you've done nothing. and claim that uh, Ghana was just uh, uh, a free rider. Uh, Ghana did nothing uh, to 
uh, either recruit members, uh, canvass, lead campaigns, uh, travel the country. Uh, so no one will do that. So yes, that's so that's that's what makes me much more fulfilled and satisfied to know to know that I leave the DA uh, knowing that I did the best that I could, uh, and that uh, I don't owe the DA, and the DA does not owe me anything. Okay. So that's that's what makes me happy. The other things that people could could say or not say, I know what I did. And uh, like I say, uh, there will be no one that will uh, climb the Carlton Center. Maybe this nowadays, uh, now that we are here in Santin, I'm told that the tallest bu- building is now in Santin. It's no longer Carlton Center. Yes, it is. They can't even climb that mountain, even that, 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 that uh, building. You are very that kind, I did Kana. You are very kind. You are very careful with your answer. You are very diplomatic with your answer. Um, what are your thoughts on the blacklist? She then goes on in response to yet another black leader, yeah. the inability to retain black talent by the DA. Mm. She then puts out a list of their black representatives. When I saw that, she says, I don't know how to read for meaning, whatever. <laughs> when I saw that, my biggest takeaway was how demeaning. What do black DA leaders think who put in, you speak about what you've mm. given to the DA. My assumption would be that these very names that she's listed do the same. In whatever corner they occupy, they also pour heart and mind mm. into building this organization. Then they're reduced to a blacklist by the chair of the FEDCO. What is your reading of that moment? Yeah, I mean, uh, so... And well, as you said, you don't owe the DA anything. You don't owe them kindness. You owe them... Maybe you owe me honesty. Let's try that. Yeah, uh, obviously, when, when the list is published, uh, I... Bagash Ghana will not be on that list. No, because you're not one of them. Uh, He's, because she says we've got thousands of others. Because, we because, don't need not because need Because it's published at the time that uh, Bagash Ghana has left. Uh, had it been published at the time that Bagash Ghana is there, uh, obviously one will have uh, uh, raised the issue um, uh, to say, no, I don't think this is the right way to deal with it. I think we must find uh, a much better way uh, to but whatever it said about the organization uh but you know um it's 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 one of those things that uh, uh you don't have to be so careful you're that, no longer that, there you're no, no longer it's, you, know, you, know, you know like feel free you, you know you know you know it's, it's not a question of being unfree um but it's how i i see it how so if if Magashle was in the DA, how would he have handled it? Would he would he have uh, uh, dealt with it on 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 on, um, on Facebook and no, so forth? No. Probably not, uh, because I I try not to, uh, contrary to what many people believed, uh, believed because uh, that's what some believe that I, I'll I'll, I'll uh, maybe tarnish uh, the name of the party, but I uh, I think I, I I would have raised it if my name had been there. But one kind of uh, say it, it it's happening uh, when it's me who has left, mm. you know, and not wanting to uh, attach too much importance on it. Uh, I I I did say that I've I've done my best in the twenty years. My work internally, uh, my work externally uh, is there for all to see. And I I trust that there are members, people, leaders in the DA that uh, if uh, they they are aggrieved, uh, as I would have been, uh, they should take this matter. Uh, it's it's up to them. Uh, it's not for me. Um, it, it it concerns me. And sometimes I was like, no, uh, I must pass on the button. After twenty years. Uh, new 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 leaders must emerge who, who, who should be uh, uh, attending to these matters. What does it say to you though about Zilla as a leader yeah. to have done that though? What does that communicate to you? Even uh, as an outsider? No, I mean like for, for me and, and it's, not, it's not something that uh, I hide uh, from from Helen because I do I do talk to her uh, uh, is that there, there are instances where you must scroll past. The sky is not going to fall when you scroll past. Scroll past certain things, 
uh, don't don't always take uh, the bait that's 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 out there. Sometimes uh, that's why even when people uh, you'll know over the years will have uh, 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 written um, maybe tweeted or something about me, uh, and I'll scroll past. Sometimes I'll I, I might I might have the the urge to respond. I was like, ah, maybe let me let me run on it. You know, you know, like when you run and you sweat, you realize that you know what, there's more to life than uh, uh, responding to uh, some of the things that are said about you, that are said about uh, the organization. So that's that's how I get to to deal with it. But one shouldn't over prescribe on how other people deal with it. But um, if it was me, uh, one would have uh, scrolled past. Mm-hmm. Learn to let go of things. You don't have to comment on everything. Let's speak about your future. In your statement, mm. you mention Songe Zozibi's book. It comes on the back of the Rivonia Circle itself. It's mm. a statement that says, you know, the time is ripe for new political culture. You mm. speak of a new political culture. The current political system is not working. I think mm. many mm. would agree with that view, that the party system isn't where we need to be as a country. Tell me about that vision that has been sparked by Songezo mm. for you. And what that means for you as an individual? Yeah, I mean, uh, I have cited uh, Songezo in my statement uh, because he has written a book, uh, and I, I, I think generally in the in the in the country, the the there is uh, maybe let me not use this term uh, because other people might connect it to other people. No, please feel free. Let, I want let, to make let, a connection let, myself. Let, let me use the term that. <laughs> We tend to write a lot in terms of what should be done, and and very little time is spent on actually doing the very th- same things that we are prescribing. So, like you say, the feeling in in society that uh, almost our our, our our democracy has been stolen or hijacked, whichever term you want to use. Not so much for the benefit of the people. It's there. No one can deny it. Uh, mm. you, you look at the 2021 elections uh, and, and you kind of see uh, that many people say, no, this this current thing seems to be uh, locking us out. You know, like we don't feel part of, um, of, of the system. And you, when you are Makashule at that time, you, you start thinking to say, all right, what 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 should be done? I mean, what one could have easily said, uh, let me let me continue the way we are. Let's let's continue at this small pace that we are, we are moving, or try to say no, guys, something has to happen, um, and it's not about it's not about me. It doesn't have to be about me. Uh, it has to be about the people of this country. And I I was starting I was starting to feel maybe uh, a lot. A lot uh, impatient in a way uh, to say no man we, there's there's just too much uh, writing too much pointing out of what should be done and very little of 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 doing it mm, so, a lot of diagnosis yeah, yeah. i mean like we it, it's basically death by diagnosis <laughs> it, it, I, i'm telling you i mean, I mean like, from, yeah you you i can, you, I can, I can you, see that you, you can go to uh whether it's uh, I mean, like the shows that you run here on seven or two, you read the newspapers. The diagnosis is there. People yeah. even prescribe what should be done. You know, you know, you know what happens. Mm. We lack the courage. We're a society that lacks courage. We l- courage of our convictions. Yeah. So, so there is that part where you know, like, hey, it's like if if I were to embark on this course of action, I'm going to lose something. Mm. And and I said I said I said to other people, you know, if if you don't embark in this course of action, you are going to lose more. But can it's also because of the comfort of security, the so called comfort of security. You are you were in the legislature. Yes. So that comes with a set salary, you set yes. benefits. So the assumption is you want to keep those intact. You have a family. Yes. So one will make the assumption that Ghana won't take a leap because his family must be taken care of. But as you're now saying, actually, if you don't take that leap, that security, that some assumed security is actually at risk. That's what you're saying to us. You, you, you know, Sidi, uh, it wasn't so long 
that uh, our neighbors just up north in Zimbabwe in Zimbabwe mm. Mm. You, you thought you had money in the bank you, you think ah now uh, my pension is worth a million mm. nah? you're like I ah, know my pension at least is two million there was a point where <laughs> 10 billion rand couldn't buy a toilet paper in, in Zimbabwe 10 billion dollars not 10 billion rand 10 billion zim dollars couldn't buy a toilet paper so if if you think now that no I'm trying to secure myself there might come a point where in that <laughs> it will be more expensive to withdraw your your 3 million that's mm. in the bank that that 3 million will be worthless if we if we if we allow the situation to sink further than we are and that's what I'm saying we know what should be done but but you know what's it it's not enough it's not enough to know what should be done you must do it you can't tell me that no someone must do it who must do it who must save this country if it's not us if it's not us our generation CD, because we can't expect our parents no we can't ex- we can't expect our well, grandparents been, to do this so if deceased yeah if it's not us who must do it then Ghana, let me ask you this when we spoke last week, you said you're having conversations yes. about action, right? Who are those conversations with? A lot yeah. of people have pegged, obviously, Rivonia Circle mm. because of Song Yezo. Yeah. Um, and because of the statement that they released about mm. the political culture mm. that needs to come to the fore. A generation of new leaders. You mm. spoke of generation of new leaders. Mm. Who are you having the conversations with about what the way forward is? And when can we expect something to come from those conversations? So I've had conversations with Songhezo, and and this was, and because it's it's very important. I think in South Africa there's always this thing that uh, if you, if you if you kind of uh, a, a member of uh, an organization, if I say I'm having a conversation with someone from Defend Our Democracy, then tomorrow someone will write and say Defend Our Democracy is the is the political vehicle, mm. or the political alternative, and it and I say it's not. Uh, and many people have 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 continued saying to say Ghana is going to Rivonia Circle. Rivonia Circle is going to be that political alternative. And the Rivonia the, Circle, as you say, and, is a think tank. And, and the only link is because Songhezo is there. Yeah. Uh, and Songhezo is part of starting that uh, the convening power of Rivonia Circle. But the Rivonia Circle is not that alternative uh, uh, that I'm speaking of because this alternative must be able to. Uh, convene and galvanize uh, uh, South Africans, and and uh, I mean, like as I sit as I sit here today, uh, the some of the response that one get got uh, on um, on email, uh, on on WhatsApp, on 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 social media, where people say, you know what, we've been waiting for this. Count me in. Mm. Uh, it it might not be a huge a huge number. But what I do know is that I'm not alone. And and some and some might might say, you know, you know, Ghana, uh, maybe you you might regret this decision. Yeah. Uh, you know, you know, you know what I would regret. I think had I not taken this decision, I might have regretted not taking the decision. Mm. Taking the decision and failing is not something that I'll regret. Because if I fail, it means I'll learn something. Yeah. But sitting and, and be scared of taking a, a, a courageous decision on the basis that it might fail because others have failed before me. Um, it's not something that I was like, I, w- I would have been content. I'm like, what, what, what would have been my, 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 my use to this country? I'm, I'm scared to, to put my, 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 uh, my thoughts, my, to say something must be done. I mean, our... The, the people that came before us risked uh, some risked uh, the, the 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 only gift they got f- from God, which was life, for mm-hmm. us to get here, and we can't even uh, risk uh, you know like the some of the smallest things because we are scared we are scared I, like I mean like earlier on we were saying people are scared of losing that economic uh, you know Secur- access security blanket, yeah. And and part part of that is because we have made uh, being in politics, saving your country, as like you are you are an outcast. It's it's not supposed to be for for people who 
who are in stable job it must be for people for other people i was like but whose country is this if 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 the people who work maybe the people who work at prime media who can say yeah maybe journalist yeah it's not in public but the support staff in prime media why why should they not be involved in in rebuilding their country why should they be scared because when <laughs> you know when when this uh, when this plane crashes city this south african plane when yeah. it when it crashes doesn't matter whether you're in the business class section you're We're in the all first going class down with it. hey it crashes you go down we all go down with it who yeah. are you talking to in the da the previous da leaders and i'm asking this because You've got a Musi Mama who's doing his own thing, former mm. DA leader. You've got Lindy Wemazibuga, former DA chief whip in parliament, also doing her own thing. You've got Herman Mashaba. You and I have had lots of talks about mm. Action and Say and why Action and Say is not the ideal vehicle for you. Yeah. Respectively, I understand that. But mm. who are you having conversations with along those lines of former yeah. leaders of the DA? One <clears> imagines <throat> because you once coalesced around similar ideas, mm. you were able to find each other at the table too. Yeah, so... For me, uh, in taking this step, uh, I, I did not initially say I want to talk to DA people. Uh, this is this 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 course has to be greater than uh, uh, my former colleagues in the DA. Mm. Um, uh, it, it has to be, and and when I talk of the political alternative, it must go beyond that which uh, we know, that which we can currently imagine. Um, uh, to something much bigger. Um, I, I haven't, I haven't actually, other than people calling, uh, like you say, uh, the p- people who had left the DA, uh, calling to say uh, everything of the best, you know, uh, uh, and telling me that no, actually, it's not called outside the DA. <laughs> <laughs> Contra- no, that's an ANC uh, mantra. <laughs> Uh, That's an ANC so, mantra, yeah. not a DA mantra. Uh, yeah, I'm so, yet to so, hear anybody say that about the DA. Yeah, so so no, they, they, I'm I'm saying what they told me. Okay. Uh, no, no one in the DA said it's cold outside the DA. Yeah, I can believe that. Uh, but but peop- those that called me, they said no, it's actually not cold. So you don't. They you affirmed don't, it. You don't, you don't need to come with uh, heavy jackets <laughs> and all those things. Uh, you know, it's not it's not uh, it's not cold. Uh, so. Uh, it's it's been it's been a number of days now, um, and uh, one starts the conversations. Um, I'll, I'll, I've been talking to those that have reached out to me. Okay. Uh, that says, you know what, I'm ready. Uh, but equally, uh, like I said, I, I mean, I've spoken to Songhez because he's written a book. As he said, he's, he's ready to do what he's written about. So the on, the only thing that I wanted from him was just a confirmation. It was not. It was never a discussion because okay. because he has written a book. You, when you write a book and you say I'm ready, then it's like all right, you are ready. Uh, then we, we we need to reach out to more people. Mm. Well, we need to reach out to more people. So how long before we get an announcement? This is my parting shot to you. Yeah. How long? You said there'll be no rest for you from politics. You continue in the <laughs> space. How long before we hear what the actual vision is for the future? So, so it's August now. Uh, I'll try to reach as many people as I can in the next two months, and I'm hoping that uh, uh, you know, sometime before the end of the year, uh, enough people have been reached, and we can uh, we can now say, you know what, uh, let's do it. Because for me, it was important to embark on this on this journey outside the DA. Uh, because I didn't want someone to uh, to have a, it's like no I've got I've got a scoop. Ghana is working on creating a political <laughs> alternative, like uh, like a uh, uh, front page or headline on seven o two. City Madia has got an inside <laughs> info that Makashule Ghana is is exploring a political alternative. Listen, if N- that was happening, I would have had that actually. N- now, now you're free. Now I can do it freely. I can meet whoever I want to meet, and I don't need I don't need to meet people in in dark corners. Where in, uh, during the day I'm doing a, a DA work, and at night I'm I'm plotting other things. Now it was important for me uh, now because uh, the situation, as I say, it's it's so urgent. It was important for me now to say, I think it's time to uh, to explore in the 
in, in, in the public mm. um, and not do it uh, uh, after hours in the dark, uh, dark corners. And all <laughs> that, you know? so, because because okay. part, part of the culture that we need to change, um, it's, uh, it's being open and, and uh, honest with, uh, uh, with South Africans, honest with communities in terms of what's happening. Uh, because at the moment, uh, you know, p- people say, no, we are representing you. But uh, people don't feel they are being represented. Yeah. They don't feel that uh, when, when, when politicians, maybe myself included, uh, and, and one of the good things about failing uh, is that you learn. And I've learned that uh, there, there has to be a change in, 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 in political culture. And maybe as, as, as one of the questions that you have been asked that I'll, I'll respond to in any case, Makashle Ghana does not uh, seek to be the leader of this political alternative. Uh, Makashle Ghana is an activist. Makashle Ghana is an organizer. All I want to do is to organize, is to speak to South Africans to say, hey, Vuka, Tsuka, Tsuka, hey, the country is going down. <laughs> if, if you think you are safe uh, wherever you are, uh, you are not safe when it crashes doesn't matter uh, the uh, how, how uh, uh, expensive the house uh, you live in is uh, it crashes with you and and if we don't do something now those little savings that you think you are protecting now they will evar- evaporate in same in the same way that they evaporated in uh, in zimbabwe in the same way that they evaporated in sri lanka in the same way that they evaporated in Argentina. Don't think that you are special as a South African. Thank Wake you. up. It's time for South Africans to rise. It's time for the people to eat. Thank you. That's Maka Shule Ghana saying it's time for South Africans to catch a wake up and that he will have an announcement. He will, will get essence of his vision before the end of the year. But ultimately, he's saying Turang, Turang, Time is running out fast. Thank you so much for tuning in. That was Maka Shule Ghana, former DA member of the provincial legislature in Gauteng. That's it from us. This was produced by Dudu Zile Masuku and Amu Ramela. For Eyewitness News, my name is Tidi Madia.